Uh, today's a great day to be a Shocker. Um, you know, I'm excited to welcome Mike Pelfrey, an All-American here, 12-year major leaguer, and, uh, and his family, Angela, um, Chase, Madison, and Avery. Uh, you know, we visited, uh, Mike and I visited when he was, I think you were in the big leagues with the Twins. Stayed in kind of contact. Uh, he'd reach out to me during the season, and, and uh, that was years ago. And uh, his big goal was to finish his college degree when he retired. And uh, he loves Wichita State, all the great things that have gone on here and the tradition. He's a big part of it. But uh, he's, he's finishing his degree. And uh, the situation with Coach Steele, the, a lot of people think that the timing was poor at this time. Uh, Mike had all, always aspired to go back into pro ball. Uh, wasn't really surprised. Mike did a fantastic job for us for two years in a semester, and we wish him uh, great success. But he passes the torch to Mike Pelfrey. And um, with our situation, we have a lot of pitchers back. Uh, the thing about Mike that I love the most is the person that he is, the heart that he has, and the love for, the, for Wichita State, the city of Wichita, the state of Kansas, and Shocker Baseball. So uh, we talked after I found out, I think, on January 2nd that Mike had resigned. Um, and I was elated uh, to have the opportunity. Sometimes timing, you know, a lot of people think timing is poor. Uh, I actually took this as a positive, thinking, you know, this is an opportunity to get one of the legends of Wichita State pitching, probably one of the top three guys of all time here, and there's many, been many greats. But uh, just knowing that I can trust him for the person that he is, our players are excited about it. Uh, not many college athletes get to work with a 12-year major leaguer. And most of our guys, like last year, we had 11 guys drafted. They aspire to play at the next level. So I, I, I think in college baseball, it's a grand slam for us, for our program, and for our players. And uh, the good thing with Mike is he lives right down the street on 13th, I think. So you know, he doesn't have to travel far. But uh, you know, we have Coach Stevenson here today. Um, when I accepted the job, Coach Stevenson and I go way back to 1986, including Brent. Coach Stevenson's here, Brent Kimnitz, who developed Mike and many other greats. Uh, the big thing for me is becoming one, and I think today with Mike Pelfrey joining Wichita State that we are finally one, and that's extremely exciting. So uh, great things are happening here. Uh, we'll have a first pitch banquet February 1st with Coach Stevenson as our, as our guest speaker, and then we get ready to start our 2019 season. And, uh, you know, I can't say enough about Mike. He sent me a nice text message after we had – kind of completed the process of, of, of getting him hired. And the words that he used and the love that was in the, in the words that he texted me really touched my heart. And um, just extremely excited to have six foot seven, all American, 12 year major leaguer, Mike Pelfrey, back in our dugout. And I don't know what number he's gonna wear, but I told him one rule about accepting the job is he cannot stand next to me for the national anthem. <laughs> at 6-7. So I'll turn it over to Mike. I, I want to thank Coach Stevenson for coming today, how much he means to us and Brent. And uh, there were a lot of great players that have played here that are in pro ball, the pitching coaches. A lot of people were interested in the job. But Mike was my number one choice, and I'm excited to announce Mike Pelfrey, uh, Wichita State Shocker pitching coach. Thank you. Um, before I get going, I, I need to thank uh, Newman University. and. And Zane Ealing, you know, for giving me the opportunity to coach at Newman. Uh, I think Todd would, Todd would agree that if I didn't have that, those three semesters or a year and a half of that experience, I don't think I'd be here today. Uh, so I'm very, very thankful for that opportunity to jump straight into coaching uh, from playing that they gave me. Uh, also, thank you, very thankful for WSU and Todd for, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, Todd and I have always had a, had a great relationship. Um, like he said, we've, we've talked over times. I've always sent him texts. We've always been in communication. Um, and, you know, when he called me the other day uh, and he asked me if I was interest interested, uh, I couldn't get the words 100% out of my mouth fast enough. Um, and it obviously comes from growing up in Wichita, uh, coming to the game, seeing the, seeing the, the support that the, that the community gave Wichita State, the atmosphere at the games. Uh, I remember at high school, I couldn't get out of practice fast enough to get over here and watch these games. 
so this has always uh, been a dream of mine. Uh, I'm extremely thankful for this opportunity. Uh, I know when I, I when I came here as a player, I got to play for a legend, and, and Gene Stevenson. Um, you know, obviously one of the most successful college coaches in, in the history of the game. Uh, JT, uh, it was it was an honor. Um, I got to work under Brent Kimnitz, uh, best pitching coach in in the country. Uh, and, and the big thing, you know, which I'll, it'll get into, you know, what I'm going to do when I'm here uh, as a pitching coach. But when I came here, I, I felt like I was extremely talented on the on the physical side. I'm six seven. It's probably 180 pounds. So that's probably pretty light. Uh, but I was talented physically. Uh, and which I've been talking to Todd, I think maybe some players here are maybe they're unsure of themselves or not, t not quite totally confident in themselves. And that's the thing that, that Brent was so good at, you know, bringing a young kid in here and, and building them up and, and making them believe that he's a world beater and he can do uh, anything, anything he wants in this game, right? As long as he believes in his ability and believes in his stuff and trusts himself, you know, good things will happen. Um, so which brings me, which brings me to this, into this spot, uh, which I need to thank Mike Steele. The last couple of days, I've been going over uh, arm care. I've been going over the throwing program, um, bullpen routines, all this, all this stuff. And he left, he left me in a in a very good spot. Uh, he left me in a spot that um, this is not a, this is not an overhaul on the pitching staff. All the all the work's done. The programs are in place. I got I have to do what what Brent did. And hype these kids up because I, I've watched video. These kids are extremely talented, uh, extremely gifted, and, and I understand the mental side of this. If if I can make them believe in themselves and trust their stuff, sky's the limit. These guys are going to take off. So, uh, very appreciative of what Steele's done. He's helped me also transition it, and I bounced stuff off of him into coaching. Uh, same thing with Brent. Brent has been a huge asset, and I'm sure he's going to continue to be a huge resource for me. Uh, but this is this is my dream job. Um, getting back into coaching, this is what I wanted to do. Uh, it's the reason I went back to school, which, which Todd mentioned about getting my degree, and it was to be at Wichita State. Um, so I'm extremely thankful for the opportunity and the chance to give back to the program that has given me so much. This place has obviously changed my life, uh, and I'm extremely thankful for this, and uh, I'm, very, I'm looking forward to getting going. Well, it's different. My my last couple of years of um, last five or so years in the big leagues, I I was kind of looked at as more of a mentor for for the for the younger players breaking in, and and uh, I enjoyed that. And that's kind of got my my mind on coaching. Started making my think about when I'm done here, my, what I want to do, my my second second part. Um, and, and it was always like I said, it was always here. Right. The, the reason I went back to school, the reason I went to gain, gain experience at Newman was ultimately to, to get the opportunity um, to come here. But once I got to Newman and I was given 23 guys, um, the, I think the big difference was that, that it was no longer part time. Right. And when you're in the big leagues, you're a professional. You still have to take care of yourself. Right. But now being a coach, it's 100 percent about the players. And obviously, there's 23 different personalities that you have to find a way to relate with each one of them, uh, find out what makes them click. And I think that's one of the, my biggest strengths is I'm a, I'm a very good communicator. Uh, and I can relate, I feel like, with anybody, which I think is going to be huge. Uh, but just it being a full-time job and, and having 23 different personalities to, to try to get, get the message across to, uh, I think was the biggest thing, and, and obviously along the ways I had to put some programs in, throwing programs and stuff like that, that I kind of just maybe took for granted, because I, I did it without without thinking. But uh, once you start putting the, the pen to paper, it uh, it came pretty easy. How much of this might you think is just raw stuff and mental for these for, for guys at this level, and, and where do you focus with them? I guess from what you've seen of the staff that it says. Well, go, going through talk, talking to Todd, I, this is an extremely talented group, um, and for for me, the expectations the same thing when I was here as as, as a pitcher and Brent Kim and say we're going to aspire to be the best pitching coach or best pitching staff in the country, um, and I think that's attainable. Uh, 
all up and down. You look, there's power, there's power righties, there's there's bullpen guys at four four plus pitches, uh, guys starters they can be. This team is extremely talented, and and I understand that when you have that ability, and and you and you buy in and you start believing in yourself and you have confidence, you can do anything in this game. And you know even at the even at the next level, you see guys with you know tremendous stuff, and maybe sometimes they're unsure. But when they, you can see them when they get over that hump and that bright light goes off and they start believing, great things happen. So that, that's my whole thing. And I told Todd the same thing. I, I feel really good about we're still left this program. I, I'm going to build these guys up and tell them how good they are. And, and these guys are going to take off. But uh, I feel like they're in a really good spot that I'm coming into. And, and uh, it's going to be a really good year. I think what, one of the biggest changes is obviously, uh, which we haven't necessarily got into, is the, all the different Saber metric systems and stuff like that that tell you different things, and um, which has kind of been huge all across baseball at every level. So, um, and at Newman, we, did, we didn't have those things. Uh, I even heard that we have systems now that, that spit out uh, scouting reports. So. Uh, we had to go through and chart all those hand by hand at Newman. Guy hit a ground ball. What was the count? What pitch you threw? Uh, so we had to go ahead and do do all that stuff. So that'll be nice from from that standpoint um, to be able to have that, that as a resource and be able to use that. Uh, obviously, uh, I don't know if anybody's totally locked in on that stuff and and completely understand it. So that's going to be a learning process. I think another thing that's huge and that's changed in college baseball is obviously calling the game from the dugout. Um, and I, th I think maybe some of the, the control, I think that maybe it was, it was back in the day, it was on the pitcher and the catcher to communicate, uh, which we, t we, we talked and, and we're going to find a, a solution if that's what, you know, ultimately we decide to call, to call the game, we're going to call the game. Uh, if, he, if, he's, if we're all com everybody's comfortable with sitting down with the pitcher and catcher and going over, hey, this is the scouting report, this is what this guy's weakness is, but ultimately at the end of the day, this is what your strengths are and this is, this is what you need to do to be successful. Uh, so we'll find the right, uh, the right mix to, to make this thing work. Uh, but there's definitely been some, some changes over the last you know, 10 or 12 years, not only in college, but you know, in, in Major League Baseball at all levels. levels. Todd, have you talked to any of the pitchers since you made the hire? And, you know, what do they say? I had to do a conference call at 1 o'clock uh, the day that uh, Mike resigned. He resigned, I think, at 9.15 that morning. So, I did a conference call and uh, said, hey, just like hiring Mike Steele, the next guy is going to be very good too, and I think you'll really like him. Uh, if I could get Mike to accept the job, which he said he was 100%, the answer that he gave me was the answer that you're looking for. So he, he answers questions very well. He said 100%, but uh, did a conference call. You know, these, the thing that you understand as a coach after 26 years of coaching is kids move on faster than we do. Uh, they're just ready for the next hire. Uh, no one is defecting or leaving. Uh, the conference call, I said at the end of the conference uh, call, if you want to call me individually, do so. I had two calls. They said, hey, this could be good. I said, let's see who we get. And uh, since then, Mike has spoken. He's gradually reaching out to the guys that are coming through the office. They're starting to come back to school. And I think we just keep rolling. I mean, when you get a 12-year major leaguer, an All-American that, that developed right here um, and has a love for the university, um, you know, it's all about timing. You know, years ago, Mike was in the big leagues. So the timing wasn't good. Um, the timing is great right now, and I'm really excited about this. And the big thing for me is be, being one as a coaching staff, understand what we're doing, communicating. I, I don't mind being told no or, you know, or whatnot. Whatever we have to do to help these guys get better. I mean, let's understand, we, we've had talented players. We had 11 guys drafted last year. We had the third pick in the draft. We had the 40-something pick in the draft. Cody Hart, Hoyer was a walk-on that went in the fifth round. We have good players. And I think being one as a team is the big thing we're trying to accomplish here. And, uh, you know, Mike's positive energy, the person that he is, just the mixture that I think that we will have together along with Coach Esposito, who is fantastic. Scott Gers, who has been with me since the beginning, and Willie Schwanke, who's a volunteer coach, who's an up and rising coach to come. We have recruited well. 
So it's not like uh, Mike's coming in and we have to go get 10 pitchers for next year. That class is done. The junior class, we're on top of that. I mean, recruiting is so fast now, you're really two to three years out. And that's how we've caught up. And if you look back at last year's club, that was the first recruiting class. And you had 11 guys drafted second most in the country. So the thing that I'm comfortable about is a credit to Mike Steele. Uh, where our pitching staff is at, they know what they have to do. Throwing program, arm care, conditioning, they, have, they, they know it like the back of their hand. And so, and Mike's not going to be a guy that's going to come in and just wipe everything out and we start new. He's going to take the pieces that he likes and it's his pitching staff. So uh, I think it's going to be really fun. It's, it, he has instant respect and uh, that's a good thing. You know, I have chills right now because I've never been with a, a guy in our dugout that has 12, you know, major league years. So uh, the thing of it is, is I've been keeping up with Wichita State since Coach Stevenson in 1986. So we wait, Coach and I ate lunch yesterday, and we were talking about the players. I remember them all. But I can't describe having this guy. You know, I, like six foot seven. He looks like a big leaguer. He was a big leaguer. He's an All-American. He's a shocker. So uh, it's it's. I'm really excited. This to, today is a huge day uh, for our players and uh, our program, and for our alumni. And uh, to have him to say 100%, I mean, it was over. So uh, I just look forward to working with him every day. And as you get older, as a coach, uh, you don't want any drama. You want good days. And uh, I think that's what we're gonna get from Mike. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I said the other day, when I left Wichita State, I thought this was the best place in college baseball, right? And obviously the coaching, the atmosphere, everything played into that. And I could never repay Wichita State for what they've done for, done for me, done for my family. I mean, it's changed my life. Uh, it's made me, it not only made me a better player, it made me a better person, it made me a better man, a better son, a grandson. Uh, it's made me a better friend, teammate along the lines. Uh, father, husband, I mean, we could, we could keep going. So I could never repay Wichita State. And, that, and that's why, you know, this opportunity, I think, means so much to me because it, it gives me an opportunity to, to give back. And like I said, I could never repay Wichita State for all they've done. Um, but this is an opportunity to kind of get my foot back in there and, and do that. And, and hopefully, you know, we can live up to the standards that's been built. You know, obviously, it's, it's not easy for Todd replacing somebody like Gene Stevenson, Hall of Famer. Uh, and, and for 38 years or however long, 36 years, the bar was set pretty high. Uh, but I think that's what Wichita State deserves. I think that's what Wichita deserves, the community, the support. And like I said, I remember growing up, and it was, this was the place to be. And hopefully we can, get that, we can get it back here, get the support back here, get the alumni back here, and get this thing rolling again. And then, um, you know, everybody's going to be happy. So uh, that's the focus. Uh, but like I said, it was, this was the place to be. Um, so that's what we're looking looking to get it back to. And I think it's huge because um, he was part of that, and that's what every day working for, um, and knowing you're going to win instead of hoping you're going to win. Um, and I think he'll bring a, a big part of that back. So that's also exciting. That's a very good question. Coach, how much does Mike's you know, name recognition, his presence, how much could that huge. help on the recruiting? It's, you know, the recruiting has been good. I, you know, I keep saying that. I mean, we've really done a good job of recruiting. And, uh, you know, who would not want to come to Wichita State to work with Mike Pelfrey to prepare you for the next level? But during those three or four years that you're here to get a great education, uh, to play in a fantastic facility that's even going to get better with phase five that hopefully we start on, and the facilities will improve. But, uh, you know, I. Not many people have an opportunity uh, to do that. I know Oklahoma years ago hired Vern Rule, who pitched in the big leagues, and they ended up winning the national championship with Vern. Uh, Larry Koshell hired him, and he made a big difference. 
and Vern has since passed, but uh, what a great pitching coach he was. So uh, hopefully Mike Pelfrey can follow the, the steps that Vern did for Oklahoma. So I, I think that's huge. And you don't see many big leaguers come back to college. It takes a really special person to do that. Because by the time you've played 12 years in the big leagues and dealt with all the stress and anxiety of playing at that level, uh, you're pretty much done with baseball. And it just shows a lot from Mike loving Wichita State so much to want to give back and to have that interest. Because the recruiting, the hardest part of the job is recruiting. And uh, I mean, from March 1st to November, it never ends. It's every weekend. You don't have a weekend off. It's seven days a week. And a lot of people call and go, hey, uh, the summer they think we put our feet on the desk. That's when you get to work because it's all about players. It is all about having good players. And Coach told me that in 1993. Uh, it's not the X's and O's, it's the Jimmy's and Joe's right at X Stadium during the summer when I was managing the Liberal BJ's. So it's about players. And uh, now is getting one. Becoming one as a pitching staff, hitting defensive, all together, one heartbeat, and uh, being able to keep the team together. So it's exciting. I, I think it's a good mixture with the other coaches, too, though. Uh, I think it'll be a really good mix with Sammy Esposito, Scott Gers, and Willie Schwanke. And Dan Cahill's here today, and Dylan Barron, and they do a great job for, for us with the training room and arm care. There are so many things in today's baseball that mm -hmm. players have to do, especially pitchers. They're time-consuming.